Today I'm doing a tutorial on something I've honestly been hesitant to do. I'll be covering how to consistently stick a target with a rope dart using a live blade or sharp point, such as something like this. My concern has always been the possibility that a casual viewer might stumble upon my video, see something cool, go to the kitchen, grab a kitchen knife, tie a rope around that kitchen knife, and then start swinging it around and accidentally cut themselves or stab an eye out. And I don't want to be responsible because I'm broke, I don't need to get sued. But then I started thinking, how is anyone supposed to safely practice when there isn't any videos out there that actually shows how to safely practice? Trust me, I looked. So the first thing I'm going over is safety. Please do not skip it over. Please watch it all the way through and please try to apply it because I've learned a lot of lessons the hard way and I did not learn those lessons for nothing. I want you to learn my lessons so that you don't have to go through those hard lessons. And also watch till the end because section 4 gets pretty exciting. So now that I've said what I needed to say, uh, let, well, like, comment, subscribe and all that jazz, yada yada yada. And let's begin with safety. That wasn't safe. A dart or knife on the end of a rope will have a wobble when it's thrown around. And if you aren't familiar with how it behaves, it'll throw a tantrum and smack you when you least expect it. Until you know how a dart or knife will behave, it's best to protect yourself. Here is an example what not to do. Wear long pants with thicker material. Wear shoes, not flip flops. Avoid large pockets like ones on cargo shorts because this can happen. Avoid hanging keys, belts, or anything the rope can get caught in. It's the perfect spot to snag the rope on an upspin and bring it face level. Collars or hoods can also snag the rope. Here's an example of an outfit I'd suggest. Shoes, nothing like keys or extra pockets that can snag the rope, and a clear neck. Make sure you are confident in maintaining consistent planes in your wheel and wall plane. They should keep straight lines when spinning. When you know where the dart will be consistently, you can move your body accordingly to stay out of the way if the dart gets too wily. Make sure you know a safe way to retrieve the dart while it is extended. I have a link in the description for a short tutorial for my favorite retrieval. When retrieving the dart, make sure you turn sideways so you can ensure you are out of the dart's path. There are some moves that have a high risk of injury if done improperly. If the rope from the lead hand to the head of the dart has the body in its path during the shot, such as a prodigal, your face will get a nice fat kiss if you hold on to the rope too long or if it gets snagged on hanging keys that were mistakenly left on. Alright, alright, I'm done. Grab your sharp reel rope dart and let's get started. If you want to master something, try to find a common root concept and start there. Now what do you think that would be for rope dart? Did I hear physics? Ah, I shouldn't have put it in that title. Rope dart revolves. See what I did there? <laughs> oh, I'm so silly. Hey, you're supposed to be watching. Get out of here. Pay attention. Rope dart revolves around the concept of centripetal force. What is centripetal force? Well, let's say I'm driving a car and I want to have some fun and mess with my passenger. So I take a U-turn fast, catching him off guard. And now he's leaning sideways and angry. Oh well. That's an example of centripetal force at play. As the car turns, my initial direction I was traveling is being pulled inward in a curved path tangent to the circle, which forces me to lean while the car is pulling me. Now let's look at the rope dart. As it spins, the dart is traveling in a curved path, but if I was to let go, it will still have the rotational momentum while it flies away. Watch. And that's not going to do any damage. So how do we fix that? There are some things we can do to delay the rotation. In the car example, if I leaned in the opposite direction, I would be lessening the amount of force. With rope dart, the equivalent would be moving the point of contact that is controlling the dart forwards. That's the first thing we can do. But it can only do so much because as soon as we release, the dart will start its rotational spin. We can delay the rotational spin even more by increasing slack lengths. We can also lift during the shot to hit higher on the target. 
This is helpful when shooting from long distances and combining it with a long slack length. The last component is release point. I like to release it when the dart is approximately pointing towards the feet of the target, 45 degrees. We can also adjust the angle of attack by changing when we release the dart. If we want the dart to angle upwards into the target, we can release a tad early to initiate the spin early. The same applies for shots coming from a downspin. However, you will have to take some account of added force from gravity. But the components to adjust are the same. Moving forwards, slack length, and release point. And instead of up, bringing the control point slightly downwards will suffice since gravity will be helping. I know, there was a lot of information there, so let me help you out by consolidating it into a nice little guide. We'll start by looking at the components for hitting center mass in relation to your own height. For short range, short slack, release at the 45 degree release point, minimal forward movement, and minimal lift. For medium range, medium slack lengths, release at the 45, moderate forward movement, and minimal lift. For long range, longer slack, release at the 45, extended forward movement, and moderate lift. However, situations, distances, and how each person performs their shots will vary. And if you need to alter one component, you can counter it by adjusting something else. For example, with short range, the clip where I lifted an extreme amount, I decreased my movement forward to nearly none. If I want to hit head level instead, I can keep everything the same except giving a moderate level of lift. If I'm medium range with short slack, I release a bit earlier than the 45 release point, extend the forward movement, and give a moderate lift. When you know exactly how these components affect the dart, you can hit anything using any sharp durable object by adjusting them accordingly. Now, let's debunk two common misconceptions. It is said that adding a flag will help the dart stay straight, or some say it will straighten it from the initial upward rotation. To that, I say understanding the components and good technique will always trump the flag. The flag adds drag. Drag adds force. Being able to manipulate how the dart rotates will always be better than hoping the amount of drag will align with the way you perform a move or shot with the added force or drag. Some will fight tooth and nail that it is the design of the dart. To that, I say, Adjust the components and you can use even a garden trowel. Take a look! Not convinced? Let me do it one more time without a camera cut. Alright, so how do we apply this to everything else? Well, I'm sorry to say, but there's no way I can tell you exactly how to tweak every single rope dart move. Everyone has their own unique style and what works for me might not work for you. But you now have the tools available to figure it out on your own, so use the components and tweak your moves accordingly. That being said, instead of a thank you outro speech, I'll leave you with a showcase of various rope dart techniques. See if you can spot the different components being used in each one. Enjoy and hope to see you again in the next one.